welcome to Coaching for Creatives with Kirsten. My name is Kirsten Call. I'm a therapist trained life coach and a children's book author. Together, we'll get the drama out of our lives and onto the page. Let's get started. You are listening to episode 44 When You're Angry. Anger is an interesting emotion. Many of us were taught that anger is a bad emotion, an emotion we should avoid, and if we do feel it, we definitely should not express it. It's true, we definitely do not want to express anger in a way that hurts other people. I've always found it fascinating observing my toddlers when they were angry. They had no inhibitions. They were willing to bite, scratch, hit each other, scream or cry in anger and with wild abandon. And when we get older, we feel like anger is inappropriate, so we resist it or squelch it. And you know what happens when we resist those negative emotions? It's like we're pushing a beach ball underneath the surface of the water. It will pop up eventually, either in physical health issues or emotional health issues. So resisting anger isn't emotionally healthy, and there are good reasons to be mad. If someone hurts my child, I want to be mad. If someone wrongs someone else or me, I want to be angry. In fact, feeling anger and processing it makes us more emotionally healthy. So let's talk about healthy ways to express anger, healthy ways to allow ourselves to feel and process our anger. Number one, 90 second feelings. I know I mentioned this exercise on this podcast ad nauseum, but it's so important and helpful. Here's what you do. Set a timer for 90 seconds. Tell yourself, I'm going to feel my anger right now. Notice how rage feels in your head, in your chest, in your stomach, all over your body. Allow the vibration of anger to move through you. Fully embrace it for the entire 90 seconds. Chances are, at the end of the 90 seconds, your anger or whatever emotion you're focusing on will dissipate. Okay, number two goes with number one. Number two is embrace your anger. Imagine yourself hugging it, squeeze it, and say, hello, anger, I know you're here, and I'm okay with that. (laughs) Number three, remember anger is just a vibration in your body. We are so afraid of emotions, especially those we perceive as negative. But if we remember anger is a vibration in our bodies stemming from thoughts we're having about a situation, we can feel less afraid of it. We may want to try to hurry and quickly change our thoughts so we don't have to feel the anger. But again, if we don't allow ourselves to feel or process anger, we become physically and emotionally unwell. So better to just wait before we change the thoughts. Give ourselves some time to actually feel the feeling. Number four, find a screaming hill. When I was a kid, we had a screaming hill. Mom would send the children out of the house when we were angry to scream to our heart's content outside in nature. I do wonder how we screamed like that without people wondering or worrying, (laughs) but times have definitely changed. You don't have to use a screaming hill, but you can find a safe place to scream. You can scream into a pillow or scream into your arm or scream in the shower or your closet. The possibilities are endless. Number five, exercise. We bought a punching bag many years ago, hoping our children would punch their frustrations out. We even gave each kid a pair of boxing gloves for Christmas. (laughs) Although it was good in theory, this technique did not work. People chose to swing on the punching bag. They did not use the punching bag for anger expression. It ended up becoming a blight in my basement, (laughs) so we gave it away eventually. But physical exertion is proven to help people express and process anger. So perhaps go on a run or do jumping jacks. Try push-ups or pull-ups or sit-ups. Move your body in a way that helps get that angry energy out. Number six, throw something. Sometimes we need to act our anger out. Although it may be satisfying to throw something breakable, I prefer throwing pillows or stuffed animals or clothing or something you can pick up later when you're sweaty and tired and your anger is processed through. Number seven, go to a rage room. Did you know there are places where you can go and pay to smash things? I just discovered these places exist. They are small rooms created 
for the sole purpose of screaming in them or smashing things. They even provide safety goggles and baseball bats. (laughs) This is a controlled environment where breaking things is the whole point. It's a good way to release tension built up from anger. Number eight, go to therapy or coaching. Sometimes we can't figure out how to process our anger without help from a professional. All of us have things to be angry about, and talking and venting to someone about our specific grievances can help us process the anger and move through it. Number nine, if your anger is around a relationship, tell that person. This is a hard one, especially if we feel anger isn't acceptable. When we are willing to be vulnerable and tell someone how we really feel, it can connect us and draw us closer to each other. It can be healing to tell someone we love how we really feel. For example, perhaps say, when this thing happened, fill in the blank, I felt hurt and angry. I'm still angry right now. I want us to be close. So I want you to know I'm processing these feelings. Here are some thoughts to think as you're processing anger. It's okay to be angry. In fact, it makes sense I would be angry about this. Nothing has gone wrong here. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be on my anger journey, (laughs) or my journey right now. I can choose to process my anger and work through it instead of avoiding it. And again, the big one, it's okay to be angry. It really is. It's okay, and it is normal to be angry. For some reason, that's a hard one to really believe sometimes. We all get angry. It's totally a normal part of being a human. So when you are angry, perhaps try some of the things we explored today. If you're anything like me, it might be scary to even admit you're angry. And that's okay too. But once you admit you're angry, perhaps take that anger and channel it into your art or writing. Anger creates beautiful art. Until next time, keep smiling. If you like what you've heard, check out my Get Yourself Unstuck program. Go to kirstencall.com. That's K-I-R-S-T-I-N-E-C-A-L-L.com and schedule a free consultation today. Coaching for Creatives is produced by Kirsten Call. Music and audio engineering by James Call.